usually the one is someone <laughs> usually the one is someone we know well, or at least we have a meaningful experience with, someone we have proximity to, someone we care about. <laughs> Last fall, I co-facilitated discussions with group of, with a group of mothers. It provided a window into the daily struggle, into their daily struggles and triumphs. As we explored topics like gentle parenting and generational trauma, it became evident that these women were facing immense challenges. Many of them held multiple jobs, often working long hours just to make ends meet and provide the necessary resources for their children's education and mental health needs. Despite the overwhelming demands of their time and energy, these mothers approach parenting with a remarkable sense of dedication and determination. They prioritize their children's well-being above all else, sacrificing their own comfort and well-being in the process. I witness how these women actively worked on themselves, seeking to heal from their own past traumas and improve their parenting skills. These mothers are my one, representing countless mothers in our communities who quietly endure hardships and strive for the better lives of their children. My one is a teenage girl who's very close to me. This isn't an actual photo of her because I don't have her permission to share a photo of her with you. I'll call her Jessica, though that's not her real name. This young woman's white birth mother struggles with mental health issues and poverty, often turning to illegal activities like drugs and prostitution to help her cope with the challenges of her life and to help herself to make ends meet. She was not in a position to raise Jessica, given her addictions, lack of employment, and frequent incarceration. Before Jessica was born, her birth mother chose another family to be Jessica's parents. She wanted the best for Jessica and did not feel equipped to provide for her. Jessica's birth father did not have a relationship with her birth mother and was never a part of Jessica's story after conception. As a significant adult in Jessica's life since her birth, I've also seen firsthand the ways that inequalities and racial bias have affected her, her perception of herself, and the way she interacts with the world around her. While Jessica does not currently live in poverty, I have seen how poverty affected her before she was even born. The mental and physical imprints of her birth mother's lifestyle have lasted into Jessica's teen years. These two things together, poverty and racism, have created challenges in Jessica's life that are extremely difficult to overcome, despite the love and investment of her parents. The biological consequences of that prenatal poverty and the social consequences of being raised in racist systems have created an uphill battle for Jessica. She's fighting, but she, didn't she shouldn't have to. Jessica is my one. Within less than a mile of my home is an elementary school that educates children from an array of socioeconomic backgrounds. There are families who are privileged in their position and lifestyle in my community, mine included, but there are also families less visible, less vocal, who are living paycheck to paycheck, unemployed or underemployed, and at times transient in their housing. These less visible, less vocal families send their children, young girls and boys, to our community primary school, and many of their, these children's families are struggling to pay school fees that include feeding their children breakfast and lunch at even a reduced rate. My one is these children. Their success in school is linked to their ability to have their bodies nourished and their minds free to focus on their studies and not the incessant growling of their bellies, at the very least, not at our shared community school. Ava. Oh, I'm so sorry. We are here to create global action. This is a rare opportunity to gather with people from all over the world who care about the same issues and are working in their own context to make lasting positive change for women and girls in our communities. But the truth is poverty isn't just one thing and social justice isn't just one thing. Even in the same geographical area, poverty may mean different experiences for women than they do for men and still different experiences from girls than they do from boys. And it may mean yet something different um, for women and girls of different ethnicities. We will not solve global poverty or the global problems of social justice without simultaneously solving them for individuals and communities that may experience these challenges. Major policies and initiatives are only effective if they work for the individuals affected by them. Those major policies and initiatives must be informed by the lived experiences of individuals within our communities. 
So today, our opportunity is to learn from one another about communities that are outside of our own, looking for common threads, but also important differences, and to inspire us to action in our own individual circles of influence, even as we may seek solutions that affect larger numbers of women and girls. Our purpose will be global, and we will seek global perspective through our conversations today. And then we'll commit to local action, each of us committing to some next step that is within our individual power to create. Many people, each serving one person or one group of people or one organization or one community serves many. As you know, a concentric circle is two or more circles with a common center. The central point will have a radius that is closest to the first circle. Our personal sphere of influence and ability to affect change can be likened to a concentric circle model where we individually are at the center point. Our personal level of intimacy to our one can be represented as the distance between ourselves and our personal behaviors, feelings, and actions that we have opportunity to appropriately affect a desirable outcome. When we start with opportunities with, our, with the closest radius, such as in our families, communities, schools, or even workplace, we can identify tangible solutions that we can actually implement and evaluate. The purpose of solving global problems is to improve the experience of individuals. If people all over the world bring change to their own sphere of influence, we can address global problems together. We are going to break this session into small groups of about five people per group. In your group, we invite you to introduce yourselves by each identifying your own personal strength in this work and your one that motivates you to do the work. We'll be setting these groups up automatically using random assignments. You'll have the chance to meet in this small group for, um, for each about three breakout sessions. All right, and those rooms should be open now. And you should see an invitation to join those rooms. So we'll start seeing you uh, hop into those rooms and we'll, we'll help facilitate that. And we'll send you a reminder of your task once you're there. Ava, do you want me to join a room? Are you joining the room? I'm gonna stay out here for a minute. Okay. All right, is everybody, is everybody hop into those rooms, it looks like? I have a couple of people that I see still out in the main room. Uh, I'm gonna add Carol, would you like to be sent to a room? Sure, that'd be great. Okay, I'm gonna send you to room 11. Okay. This is going well, you guys. Okay. And I just sent a reminder of the task. Oh, let's see. Salika. I'm going to add you to room three. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Do you see a Hillman Frazier? I see a Hillman Fraser is in our room, but I don't see him on the list or her on the list to be assigned. I don't either on the list. But hi, welcome. Okay, we did pretty well on time. I'm happy about that. Oh, I'm gonna, and Chi-Chi, let's see. I'll send you to room four. We have someone in room six that's by themselves. We might wanna move them out. Yeah, I'm gonna move them to room seven.
Everyone else looks like they've got, except for room four, everyone else looks like they've got. at least three green circles. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I missed my cue on that when I was trying to set up the breakout room. <laughs> I, I thought I had seen that I wasn't talking again. And so I was like, oh good, I have a second to do this. And I didn't, I had missed a slide. So No, no, you're doing great. I agree with Carol. I think it's going well. Thank you for your gentle nudge. I appreciate it. You're like, um. I'm just hey, admitting friend. someone to the room that who then now probably needs, there was someone in the waiting room that I just admitted. Okay. Hello, Eugene. I'm going to send you to room four. We've got people chatting in there. So we're going to go, if I'm understanding your outline, we're going to go until 835 in those rooms. Hang on, let me take a look. Uh, just 830. Okay. Okay. Just 830. And then when they come back, we'll have five minutes. Oh, um, that's what that means. Okay. On the first slide and then five minutes on the oh, second nice. slide. Okay. So those questions. So there's a little bit more in the first one because they'll, you know, they've got to meet each other and get used to everything and and whatnot. Um, and then the other ones go a little bit quicker. Just entered one more person. Okay. Let's see. It's looking like. Room nine could maybe use some more people. And room 11. It's funny that even with online interactions, I just need decompression time. <laughs> yeah, that's, I, I think that's, that's normal.
Okay, hoping there's some good conversations happening. So is it when you hit the broadcast button that you are able to send a message? Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm learning. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. And there's a function where you can set up the rooms and you can set them up beforehand and like handpick who goes in what rooms, but I just created random rooms. It's, it's um, incredible. And I'm hoping that those rooms stay the same i'm not 100 percent sure i think meaning I that when people they go back the they will be back with the same people yeah yeah that's my hope but um it always makes me a little nervous when i'm doing the random one that it's going to like re-randomize Welcome, Oluwakemi Salako. Just to let you know, we have some folks that are in breakout rooms, but they're coming back in about one minute uh, from some discussion points that you see on the screen right now. Okay, I'm gonna close the rooms and it should give them a quick warning that they're coming back. Okay. Yep, they should all be back in 25 seconds. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome. Oh. Sorry. I'm sure okay. back. Um, I apologize, Tayo, if you um that you didn't get to finish your um stream, but we'd love to hear from you in just one second. Um, okay. Okay. So, welcome back, everyone. We'd really love to hear um your one, and we'd love a couple of volunteers to share with the entire group and. And whether you want to unmute yourself or in the chat, um, and we invite you to share both your strength and your one, the person who brings you to this work. So feel free to unmute yourself or if you prefer to raise your hand, whatever you feel more comfortable with. I see one hand range raised, Regine. Hi, thank you. Hi, my name is Regine Polonese. I'm calling in from Port-au-Prince, Haiti. Um, my strength, I would say, it would be um, the ability to connect people. Um, so I'm part of the Haitian Women's Collective. 
Um, and that ability to build networks and connect people. I've worked for many, many years in international development. And a lot of times we work with local organizations of women um, working who are technically sound, but unfortunately they don't have the visibility or the network to grow. So that ability to connect them with different worlds. I've lived in Haiti. I'm in Haiti right now, but I've lived around the world in, you know, uh, the Americas and Africa and different regions and that ability for me to connect them with different people because sometimes they just don't have that reach um, is my strength. And then my one is my daughter um, who um, is from Haiti and just thinking about her and the access that she has right now compared to many other, unfortunately, girls or even children um, living in Haiti right now who just don't have that access that pushes me to really further the work and continue the work that we're doing. Because in 2024, when I see the circumstances of a lot of people just in the different communities that I visit and know, it's just for me, it just it just should not be like that anymore. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you, Regine. That is powerful. Absolutely. We love to hear that you are motivated by that. You're a strong connector. You're motivated by um your daughter. Lynn? Um, yes, I I had trouble because I have many. <laughs> um, I think my strength is um resilience, no matter how many times I get smacked down don't quite win. Um, I just get back up again and and try again um my my one for my my soul myself is my sister who is just uh, so much in my heart all the time um and not because of problems but because of her strengths and my other one is a woman mrs kathy peters who is a real driving force in all of Canada around the trafficking um, issue and exploitation of women and girls. And uh, she's also someone who just gets back up again and again. And, um, and I find that really, um, I stand with her and support her and work with her and, uh, and just find that very um, encouraging. Thank, Thank you. you, Lynn. Thank you. No, that is powerful. Absolutely. We know that resilience is necessary in the work of social justice and poverty, and uh, especially in work that deals with um, trafficking. Okay, we'll have time for one more. Um, Shabnam? Hi, uh, again, I'm Shabnam. I'm uh, speaking with you from Canada. Uh, so, um, my strength is uh, my self-awareness and um, because uh, I'm, I'm originally from Afghanistan and my experience of poverty when I was a child and my parents lost their jobs there due, due to a political change in, in the country, uh, that made me uh, like interested in working um, around social justice. and. Um, as our friend said, for me, it's not my one, it's my ones. And my ones are women and girls in Afghanistan who are denied of all their human rights and, and um, they're uh, pushed back to their houses and they're facing all kinds of discrimination and uh, that lead them all to, to a collective poverty. So whenever I find a chance to speak, I want to advocate for them. I want to raise mm -hmm. the, this point and I want to raise their voices because they can't at the moment. Thank you. Thank you, Shadnan. Thank you for giving voice to women who don't have a voice right now. Friends, just to, as a reminder, there are some wonderful messages in uh, the meeting chat. So look there to learn about what others are identifying as their strengths and their ones. Um, another question we have is, what did you learn about global social justice and poverty by hearing about the one as shared by members of your small group or here in the larger group? Um, how did the perspectives of your group members change your view? Feel free to shout out again, uh, raise your hand, share in the chat.
you guys are quiet on this one, but we see that many of you are still adding to the chat with your one or your strengths, and we love that. Kayo, did you raise your hand? Or... Oh, maybe not. Okay. So, just so I think, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I think that perhaps the one thing that we can all say um, is that we we have a similar heart, right? In each of the expressions of our one, it's there, there was either a point in time or a recurrent theme in our lives of those heart tugs that remind us of the value and of the need to fight for, for global social justice, to help eradicate poverty, and to elevate and amplify the women's voices who are being impacted every single day. That's powerful, Whitney. Thank you for sharing that. Yes, I would assume that there's a camaraderie in heart. Jackie? Yes, I just wanted to mention something towards the end of our conversation in the small group is that whole thing about self care and, you know, while we serve in others and our one, we need to really take care of ourselves so that we can do the work that we are cut out for or that we have undertaken. So I, I'm just kind of reaching out to everybody to just make a point of continue caring for yourselves. Yes, that's an important reminder, Jackie. Thank you so much. So friends, despite global differences, we see a lot of similarities across all of our unique contexts. By working in our own spaces, effectively lifting where you stand, we can find solutions that have a global impact. Um, there is tremendous value in learning. Uh, even as part of our even as part of our disparate experiences, whatever bank of knowledge you bring to the table is important to share. Understanding that our circumstances aren't the same, there is still value in sharing what we're learning. Combining different big ideas and perspectives together can lead to more comprehensive and effective approaches approaches to solving big issues. Addressing the issues nearest to you can help others solve the problems nearest to them. Even as we work in our own communities and contexts, our continued conversation can help bring new knowledge to the work that we do. I sense this as we consider what is similar or different about our ones, I sense this immediate emotional feeling for the people in our own stories. Before we talk about institutions and systems that are affecting all of the people in our different stories, we began with a resonant feeling. And to me, that feeling lies somewhere along the spectrum of compassion and empathy. And the outgrowth of that is a desire to help. I think we heard that from Whitney, where she kind of expressed this similar heart that we have that tugs us and pulls us towards the work that we're doing. Sinclair, what are some of the um, similarities or differences that you're sensing? Thank you, Tracy. And what comes to mind for me is the resilience of overcoming systemic barriers and the true pursuit of trying to um, to improve your own lives. And I really feel like this is, there's an interconnectedness of maternal experiences across these narratives and their unique struggles, while each story of the one underscores the enduring influence um, of maternal influence and child development. Um, the mother, My mother's group exemplifies the collective action navigating these challenges to overcome these systemic obstacles and we're sharing the commitment to overall women empowerment and improving well-being. Um, I would love to hear from you, Ava. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was particularly struck by the ways that all of our contexts related in one way or another to the intertwined physical and mental health of girls and how this physical and mental health was affected by intergenerational factors. Um, Tracy pointed out how struggles to ensure nutrition affected kids at school, um, Sinclair, you talked about intergenerational trauma and how it affects uh, the sense of safety experienced by children. 
And then when I told my story about Jessica, it's clear that some of her biophysical wiring came from experiences before her birth. So that, those were some commonalities that I saw. Awesome. Friends, we invite you now to have a similar discussion in your small groups. What patterns do you see in your different contexts? What is similar or different about the ones in your group? We're gonna send a reminder out in the group chat so that you understand again the assignment, but we're gonna send you back to your groups to have this discussion that you're seeing on the screen. What is similar or different about the ones described in your group and what patterns, if any, are you identifying? All right, those rooms are open now. You're welcome to join. Nice. Hi. Hi, okay. okay. it's Chris. Hello, Chris. So what's the topic? Um, we are talking about what's similar or different. What, we're talking about what? What is similar or different about Chris, just in case you can't hear very well now, the, um, the topic is found on the slide on the screen. If you're able to see the slide, it says, what is similar or different about the ones described in your group? This is a follow-up from the earlier exercise. We doing okay on time, Ava? Oh yeah, we're doing great. Okay. Hmm. Group four got real active. Really? <laughs> yeah, there are like five people in there. 
most of the other ones have three. One of them's got like two active people. I realized during the last section that when I was posting things to the chat, I actually was just accidentally only sending them to the host. <laughs> so, oh, okay. From so, from the original question you had asked the host. Yeah, exactly. It was defaulting back. to that. And I didn't notice that when I was posting things. So I was like, oh my goodness, we look so good. We're so on top of it. Like she says we're posting it in the chat and it shows right up, but no. No. <laughs> <laughs> darn it well it's working out so it's okay it seems yeah. to be working out it's all right we're doing okay stuff like this i want to like always want to have like another shot at it you know what i mean like yeah once you've kind of got it figured out Hmm. No, I really am learning. I'm. I, it's just. Um, I didn't know that I'll ever have to do this, but it's. It's nice to know I know something. Yeah. Learn something new today. All of this usually gets taken care of by somebody in tech, and I yeah. in the ICS. But I, I feel uh, like I'm learning some stuff. No, I'm totally jealous that you have people who just like handle that for you. That's amazing. It's helpful so that we can focus on one thing. It's always helpful to be able to focus on one thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We had them going for another five minutes, but I'm going to send a three minute warning. Okay. Okay, now I've got at least three active people per, per room. Per room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, room one is also very um, engaged. I know, right? They're like on it. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, let's see. So I'm going to probably just sneak those couple of things I was supposed to have in the chat. I think there was just two things, our bios and the link to that. Um, okay, yeah. That report. So I'll probably just, when people get back, I'll probably mention just, that. yeah, toss, toss those in there and, and mention it. We've had lots of new people join. So yeah. it's, it's worthwhile. It's worth repeating. Yeah, I if love you that. Late, you don't know who we are. You don't know what our topic was or the framework for the conversation. Yep. Yeah. I love that. Okay, let's see. And then 
And then I'm just clicking through to see when I need to be paying attention. Okay, got it. All right. Okay, I'm gonna send the closed rooms note. They'll be back in a minute. Hello, hello. Hi, welcome back. Welcome back. Ava, are you gonna do um, just that reminder first before I jump into? Yeah, I'll I'll do that. It looks like people will be back in about 10 seconds. So once everyone's back, I'll just quickly mention that. Hi everyone, welcome back. Um, we are excited to hear about uh, what you discussed in your small groups. Before we jump into that, I'm gonna post two different things in the chat. Uh, the first one I'm gonna post is a link to the report by the UN Economic and Social Council uh, that really sets the stage and framework for what we're discussing today. Um, and then the second link will be links to the bios for your hosts, myself, Ava, Tracy, and Sinclair. Um, and that way, if you wanna learn a little bit more about us, you're welcome to. But for now, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna throw it back um, to you all for some discussion. So friends, I hope that you had a fruitful discussion in your breakout groups. Just as a reminder, what we want to talk about now and, and invite those to either put some comments in the chat or raise your hand or unmute yourself. What are you learning is similar or different about your ones that you were discussing and describing in your group? Uh, and you, Lee? Hi, Anneli, you're muted. You're unmuted, you're muted. Hi, everyone. Hello. <laughs> Can you help me with your name? I don't want to butcher it. Anneli, there's a hyphen. Anneli, okay, um, thank you. Thank you so much for the session. So I was in a group with, with Sue. So Sue, so say hello, wave your hand. Um, so we had a conversation around what's similar or different with our ones. And what Sue and I found out that Sue uh, amazingly supports uh, a charity. She's done that for years. And that charity situated, a lot of the work that they do situated in West Africa, um, looking at um, girls' education. And I was sharing with Sue that at the moment I am I'm studying in SOAS, but I'm also at gender studies. But I'm also working on a project where I'm I'm interrogating, or I have interrogated, why female-led businesses do not get as much investments and funding as they should. Just really trying to interrogate what the barriers or limitations are, and then try to see how we can, you know, deliberately mainstream gender in how we um, fund female-led organizations, especially in Nigeria. And what we found out that was similar to us is that is education. So where, you know, the charity and what she's, you know, focused on, what the charity is focused on is ensuring that they want to educate girls and young women. Um, even if I'm specifically looking at, you know, economic justice is also education or re-education, as the case may be. Um, so we want so we have that similar. Another similar thing for us, criteria is, you know, is women and girls, because we do we do see that, you know, this group of uh, members of the society are highly marginalized for whatever reasons we may give, you know, culture, social norms, you know, unconditional bias, etc. But also for the fact that, you know, we're similar in a sense that women and girls do can really manage 
a lot of things if they're given the opportunity if they can be educated and equipped they can really rise up if 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 given the opportunity so we're quite similar with that um where are uh, we highlighted a difference was like i mean we're trying to say can we say that we're not globally in the same space but hang on a second it's west africa so nigeria is technically <laughs> Nigeria is in West Africa, so uh, we're quite, it's, it's, we're in the same region, but even if you look at it globally, we do believe that in whichever way is education is really important, and, you know, there's a higher percentage of children who are out of school are based in Nigeria, most, most um, importantly, and women who are affected by lack of investment opportunity for their SMEs to be funded uh, in Nigeria, even the African Development Bank has got high figures about female-led businesses who are not there. So we can argue back and forth on why, but most important thing is that re-education connects Sue and I. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Annalie. That sounds like an incredibly fruitful discussion. And it's wonderful to hear how uh, you were able to connect around this topic because you talked to Sue, I believe you mentioned. Yeah. Um, okay, we have time for one more. Is there any, any other thoughts before we move on? Just checking the chat. All right, friends. So here's another question. How can working locally in your sphere of influence impact the work of people in your contexts. So how can working locally in your sphere of influence impact the work of people in other contexts? So again, feel free to drop a comment in the chat, raise your hand. We'd love to learn how now bringing the things that you were discussing down to a very micro level in your communities, how that can um, help others. Well, that's how best practices are formed, is it not? Um, by sharing what has worked in one context and then trying to adapt it and see what will work in another context. And through that, we refine um, sort of some of those constant commonalities that unify um, it, that what will work or what has worked given certain circumstances to help alleviate poverty. Thank you, Whitney. Absolutely. This is how we get to best practices. Lynn? Um, yeah, from Canada, um, you know, I think in terms of climate change, working locally has a huge impact, um, being that the North is the cause of most of the problems that the South is basically burdened with that a we can all make a difference by the work we do locally um, to change that but also by being an example um, to how we can get to that place where we are not impacting the environment so detrimentally which of course women um, feel the burden of more than um, more than many yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Lynn. Any other thoughts? All right, we can move on to sort of our, our next set of thoughts and discussion points. From our own perspectives, individual action might feel like too little to affect global change in some cases, although we've heard some great examples of ways that, uh, that our work is interconnected. Um, what feels most relevant 
sometimes maybe national or global policies, large initiatives, or significant financial investment. But really, individual and community action accumulates rapidly to later change. This is true in a few different ways. First, uh, and this was mentioned before, things that work in our communities may be replicated in other communities. Good ideas spread. Likewise, positive change in our communities can also influence generation. Uh, so the changes that we make right now can influence those who come after us within our own communities. Also, the world's economies and societies are interconnected. So improvement in our communities influences other communities just because of the interchange that we have. And finally, there's no such thing as addressing global poverty or global injustice without also addressing local poverty and local injustice. Individual action is necessary for collective action. By taking your best next step, you bring us all closer to addressing global issues. The purpose of our conversation circle is to encourage action, as Ava said. We'd like to share with you the actions of each of us plan to take result um, based off our conversations here. Over the following four weeks, my efforts will be concentrating on organizing a drive to procure vital resources for mothers facing hardship. For example, formula, food, and um, other types of diapers, recognizing the indispensable nature of all of these items and sustaining the health and well-being of both the mothers and children. Um, I will also be providing outreach initiatives and really publishing us on, on various social media platforms to mobilize efforts and support. So friends, as a reminder, my one was the uh, children of a, of a nearby community primary school who are struggling in their families with um, unemployment, underemployment, transient housing, and lack of resources to pay for school fees, particularly those surrounding their ability to have lunch every day. Um, that has been really troubling to me. So my next best steps as, a, as the center of a concentric circle that I'm trying to affect influence in my community is to reach out to that primary school to understand the delinquency of the school breakfast and lunch fees for the families, sending their young girls and boys to school and begin to draft a plan to quickly eliminate that debt for those children and their families so that they don't have any risk of being turned away at the lunch line for their next meal. As I consider the next concentric circle out from me, out from that sort of short-term solution, um, I'm hoping to find a more sustainable plan that supports these children so that they can rely on having meals in their school. Awesome. Um, and my one was Jessica, uh, the teenager in my life. And I'm going to spend time in each of the next four weeks focusing on her biophysical well-being. Um, so I'm going to just literally focus on the one for a little while. Specifically, I'm going to check in on her nutrition and her sense of personal safety. Just because she has access to nutritious food doesn't mean she's eating a balanced diet and her mental sense of personal safety is just as important as her physical well-being. So I'm going to focus on changing the world by focusing on this one little girl and seeing if um, if we can get her to a place that's just a little bit better than she was before this converse conversation circle today. Thank you both for sharing. Um, and now we'd like you to brainstorm in your small groups and help each other to identify one of the best next steps that each person in your group can do to affect change in the next four weeks. All right, and I'm gonna open those rooms right now.
Are we almost at the end? Yeah, 9.30. Well, then I think that we're going to have, <laughs> we're going to be ending early then. Because I think, I think the next one, is that the, the last slide? Uh, well, we still have some, yeah. So we have people share their next best steps. And then, and then we've the got, and then we have the survey. And then, yeah. And then Sinclair wraps it up. Okay. Okay. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe we will, maybe we will be able to get all the way there. They've been quiet. This last one. Yeah. Yeah. That last one, they were quiet. Oh no, Mary, you're by yourself. Let's move you. Computer room. Did you hear the guy at the beginning trying to bomb the audio with <laughs> women belong in the kitchen or something to that effect? Yeah. Yep. I didn't see who it was, but I'm curious if the hosts uh, managed that one. So many it was beautiful. Uh, someone that's that's in the car with Chris Obi. Oh, really? Yeah. Can I just say that um, that this is the second time I've been in a breakout group with May Wash, and she is not. She is muted and has no video. This time there was only two of us, so there was no okay. conversation. So I left. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh. You know what? I can move you. Let's see. You are um Lynn. this Lynn, right? Yeah. Uh, yes. Let me let me pop thank you for coming out and saying something. Let me pop yeah. you <laughs> into I'm gonna pop you into room eleven. Okay. All right, have fun. Okay, so that's in room seven, May Wash, Hyatt. I just moved her to 11 as well in case she got her stuff figured out. Yeah. And that way there's them, but there's also some other folks. Yeah. Um. Oh, Lynn, you're back. Yeah, the, that room had four people, including Maywash, and the other three were all muted. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> My goodness. Okay, let's move you. Let's see. I had you in room 11. I'm going to move you. Hmm. Where am I going to put you? I'm going to put you with Sinclair in room four. There you go. Oh, my wash is back. Oh, oh there's two. Okay, and let's see, we're going until, we had this one until 20 after. We're giving them some time to talk about it. Okay. Um, so another eight minutes, is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's what that's what I had scheduled because we, we broke out a little early. Okay.
Well, you know, our number of participants has gone down. We've had 44 steadily, but we, ha we have now 36. I'm wondering. Hello. Hi, Cassandra. Hi. Um, I was in a in a room, but uh, everyone was on mute. And when I said hello, nobody answered. So can you just connect me to another room? We're How does that work? That. What, Absolutely. Do you know what room you were in? What room number you were in, Cassandra? Um, eleven. Eleven. Okay. okay. We're gonna we're gonna try room ten. There are three people in there. All have green circles, and so I'm hoping they're chatting. If not, come on back, and we'll move you to another room. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Room 12 might be a good option. I know Whitney has been active in conversation out here. So okay. if I can... Love that. Yeah, I'm wondering if uh, they're just losing steam. Uh-huh. Or we're hoping to be in a big group and kind of just lurk on the conversation a little. Yeah. Sometimes that's. I'm curious too what effect the different languages have on mm -hmm. participation because I think my understanding was and maybe this isn't correct but my understanding was that in past years they had not as many languages and that that was like a benefit of this year was that they were adding yeah they had different languages. languages for the same topic yeah yeah but it may be like breaking the group into smaller um, yeah yeah that that makes sense yeah, it would be interesting to see what the size of the other, there was one in French and was there one in Spanish? Can't yeah, I thought there was, it. yeah, I think there was also one in Portuguese, if I remember. Oh, okay. Oh, and Arabic. There was one in Arabic. Like, I think there were four or five of them. Mm, mm. So I'm wondering if that's like affecting critical mass for, <laughs> yeah. for an online conversation with strangers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did we lose Carol? Yeah, she said at the very beginning that she was only able to join for a portion and then she had a meeting. Oh, I see. That makes sense. It'll be fun to hear her perspective. Yeah. Yeah, I hope to get some feedback from her for sure. Hmm. I'm not sure why it whisked Sinclair away. She's gone? No, I mean, she's in a room. She's in room four. Okay. Let's see. Mm 
I'm really grateful for the opportunity we had to do so much prep. Yeah, I think that very much helped how um, nice and seamless it's been. Yeah, it feels very prepared. Yeah. Feel, yeah, feel prepared. Yeah, even even little like hiccups didn't create panic. Yeah. <laughs> because it was like, okay, we have everything. <laughs> yeah, there's a massive structure behind this little changes. <laughs> We're going to be fine. <laughs> oh, I find myself wanting to talk more with Sinclair about the stuff she was bringing up yesterday. She just brought it up. Like she was thinking about it because of the other meeting that she had. Yeah. And I would love to just like, you know, be an older person who's like, we also have value still. <laughs> it's, you know, our value is not determined by our, yeah. Our biological age. That's not yeah. how that works. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, and and we want we want the rising generation engaged. We want them, but to make the emphasis only their age and not their perspective. Perspective yeah. matures and perspective, you know, I, I think that's the that's the struggle when we overemphasize them being young rather than emphasize what's coming out of their mouth, right? Emph mm -hmm. Emphasize the things they're saying. I think that that can create a bit of that existential crisis that ends up happening right yeah so I don't know how you feel about it but I would welcome like a a post meeting like maybe well, yeah, yeah if we if we get like some feedback from Kelly or whatever and she could come to our post meeting but if we had some time and space we might be able to you know bring that conversation back up and it might be a nice opportunity to just Minister I mean she's her. clearly a force for good you know oh, and I for sure Okay, I'm going to send the closed room notice. Okay. All right, welcome back everyone. Hello, hello. Um, and so now we would love for you to share your be next best steps with us. Um, so feel free to, again, share in the chat, raise your hand or just speak out. We would love to hear from you. Malika, I see you. Please share. Hey, Sinclair. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, shout out to my discussion group for kind of empowering me to speak um, and share the kind of perspectives that were in our group. But um, I, I'm Malika. I work with an organization called Madre, and we're a human rights organization and a feminist fund. And something that I I just want to use that to preface this moment of like what my individual step would be because with Madre, the way that we function is that we work with global grassroots organizers, young women and girls, um, like community elders to like fuel their solutions. So it's not like in a lot of philanthropic spaces, funders typically give money to folk that they think uh, 
like to issues they feel like is necessary to address. And then they're providing the solutions, like the funders are providing the solutions. Meanwhile, Madre is working in a way where collaboratively identifying the solutions with global grassroots partners and allowing them to communicate the, the community-led solutions. And we're just fueling that, we're amplifying that, we're strengthening that with the resources that we have. Um, and that kind of inspires my approach to this question of like, what is the next best step for me? is kind of like not immediately jumping into action of like, well, I have the answer for something, so that's what I'm going to provide. Um, rather, I I hope to like listen to folk in the community and figure out what the needs are, amplify what those needs are. Uh, right now, folk are organizing e-sims for uh, people on the ground in Gaza. Like, okay, cool. How can we further amplify that initiative? Like what, like, I, I would rather be more responsive to what people are already saying and are receiving limited support um, because there's that that remedying thing that folk tend to do kind of places a bandaid on stuff when people are already shouting what the solutions are. So I want to be responsive to those so that they're not going silenced or dismissed because I, I don't know, I don't know everything. I don't have the answers for everything and I can't provide for everything, but I can respond. And so I think that's where my intentions are leading. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Malika, that's powerful. What else, friends? We have one um, message in the chat, the best, um, Next best step, reaching out to a sponsored child in Ethiopia. What else are you hearing as the next, the next small action that you can take? Annalie? Uh, hello again. Um, so in my group um, with Sue, may we join us a little later. Um, Sue, I mean, Sue's one is quite unconscious. She sends out uh, letters to... Um, the children that she supports, especially one child and in Ethiopia. Uh, so she's going to do that, this um, Esther that is coming uh, uh, as well, which which is quite nice. Um, and then for me, um, the intervention project that I've done with my team, we have the data to see, to actually show the discrepancies of gender mainstreaming in, in female-led organizations' investment. So for the next four weeks, we're going to have a meeting to and invite stakeholders, gatekeepers, and the institutions themselves to say, to speak about the data that we found and how that impacts uh, women-led um, businesses and SMEs. And then we'll, from there, discuss with them to look at how we can, you know, shift policy to favor women, speak about gender mainstreaming in investments, and then pick out um, employability and entrepreneurship skills that we can use to re-educate the young women and go very, very heavy on media as well, because we know that a lot of people will be reading and seeing that. So I plan to ensure that the majority of the prime publications across Nigeria, here's my voice, basically. <laughs> And you yeah. know, yeah, make, yeah, let them know that listen, this this is not happening. We need to change this, that, and the third. So a lot of communicating, a lot of media advocacy, a lot of policy, um, push, and hopefully change is going to be happening. Hopefully, oh, wonderful! Thank you to Annalie and Sue for uh, your next best steps. So to Lynn, really quickly, and then Jackie quickly. <laughs> um. Yes, I had talked in my group about. Uh, in the next four weeks, I want to achieve um, uh, an Indigenous plaque of land acknowledgement for our organization. And it's really more than just the plaque because it's building awareness and helping people to understand why it is important and, um, and building relationships with our Indigenous community in our immediate vicinity. Um, to, um, <clears throat> to, to just grow that um, reconciliation over uh, what has gone on for centuries um, to move us to a new place. Thank you. Thank you. Jackie? Yes, thank you. Um, 
So there's a project I've been struggling with because I think I was thinking too big. So with in the four weeks, I'm scaling down. So there are a number of uh, little communities, poor communities that cannot afford uh, sanitary pads. So I've decided within my four weeks to choose one school and to see how I could implement that, um, you know, project provision of uh, san sanitary napkins to the girls. Jackie, that's fantastic. Yes, yeah, scale down to something manageable in that timeline. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're muted, Ava. Oh, Ava. Thank you. We're so <laughs> excited to have heard um, some of these ideas from you and these next best steps. And in the chat, uh, I just posted a survey. You can also see that QR link um, on the screen. And what we've created is just a very gentle accountability survey. Um, so this survey has only two questions. The first one asks you to share once again, your planned next best step that you're planning to carry out in the next week. And the second question asks for your email address, which is totally optional. The only reason we're asking for your email address is we'd like to follow up with you in four weeks, to ask whether or not you were able to take your next best step and to find out what helped facilitate your success or if you hit any barriers, what those barriers were. We won't share your email address with anyone, including uh, the conference organizers. This is just for us to follow up with you and just find out how it went in four weeks. And we're hoping that that little gentle accountability will help motivate you um, to action. Okay, um, and I just wanted to say thank you so, so much for joining us today. Our discussions have given us a sense of shared purposes as you work to create an improved world for women and girls. Today, we have demonstrated together that each of us serve those in our most immediate proximity. We can serve many women and girls around the world. We have seen that different contexts are interconnected and that our individual actions can lead to global change. Your next steps matter. We look forward to hearing from you about the change you are able, you are able to create in just the next four weeks. Thank you so so much again for, for being here today. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, friends. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Simple. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Tracy. You're welcome. Thank you for coming. And Claire, how did your session yesterday go? It was great. It was really, really fun. I really got to highlight um, period poverty, which is obviously something I'm very passionate about. Yeah, um, yeah it was a good time. I, I, It was one of my longest speaking engagements. I spoke for about 45 minutes um, on my own. So it felt good though. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I, it was, was it, sorry. Was it an in-person session? No, it was in, it was online in this lovely okay. room that I'm in now again. <laughs> uh, it was, it was really great. I'm, I'm noticing a lot of um, participation in Canada. A lot of the participants I know uh, were based in Canada and I spoke with um, Girl Up Canada and I really, it was great to hone in again, the idea of not having to do everything right now. I feel like that's a very common theme. And I was really connecting that to the idea of being a youth, a youth activist. And I think I was mentioning to you yesterday where you feel like you have to do everything right now and being this kind of like girl wonder, child wonder. <laughs> and I it's really, I, I was work, I was talking about how I worked um, getting out of that mindset and that yeah. um, this perfectionism I have is completely not serving myself and talking about how no one thinks about you the way that you think about yourself. So if you stumble on a word or drop something or mess up here, it just doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. And what's so important in this 
work especially is authenticity and having that connectedness and being vulnerable with each other. And I think that's really where you see a lot of change happening. Yeah. Oh, I love that. That would have. So was it a special session just for um, people that were of a, of a certain age cohort? Um, I think so. So uh, Girl Up Canada really focuses on youth participation. And so it, they were um, younger. I'm, I, I, don't quote me on this, but I want to say they were from about like 14 to 18. Um, if you remember Tracy, I spoke to that. I spoke to Girl Up um, in general um, two years ago when they said that, um, oh, it's really, uh, sorry, Ava, if you didn't hear this story, but um, I was speaking to them at menstrual equity and um, I was the adult um, expert. I was 22 at the time. And they said, <laughs> it's so nice. If, it's so nice to hear someone that's old who got, <laughs> who got over all of the, um, all of these issues. And I was like, yeah. well, I'm old. Um, <laughs> In 24, I'm ancient now. So it's really nice to have this really um, worldly perspective that I have. <laughs> yeah, well, welcome to the club. <laughs> we're, we're, we're seated in the ancient section, so it's nice to have you with us. <laughs> yeah. Well, that sounds awesome. That sounds like it would have been a great conversation. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, Ava was mentioning, and if you're open to it, Sinclair, there might be a, a nice follow-up for us um, okay. conversation just to to see how we felt about this. We might invite Carol to okay. comment, you know, what, what the results are. Okay. But I, I'm assuming that we're, um, we're all done. So I just wanted to express how wonderful it was to do this with you. I felt very prepared. It was just lovely to have some time to, to kind of talk and to get to know each other better and to come up with this framework of a discussion that I thought was really good. So thank you for letting me join with you. Be with this you. is such a dream. I appreciate all of your help. This has been so wonderful. Ava with a beautiful um, PowerPoint and Tracy just leading the way, um, getting everything done tech wise and just your overall support. And just, I really felt like my voice was heard in all these discussions. Um, and I, yeah. I really hope you felt the same way um, that I echoed that support back to you. So I can't, I cannot be um, more grateful for this. Yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah, it was great fun. And I look forward to talking to you guys again before too long. If only for an after party, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Love that. The celebration begins. Okay. Well, thank All you right, so. friends. Enjoy the rest you. of your day. Um, thank you, you so much. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.